Welcome everyone. I'm excited to bring today's comments and lecture to you. We are going to start to piece together some basic techniques we've learned before, but do it in the context of problem solving. In the world of querying, it's not enough to know that there are a lot of functions or techniques that are available, but we end up having to do those things in the context of solving a problem. So just to reiterate, I'm going to run this query that's, that we have, um, and it's going to select all the columns from the stock data table. I only want to return the trade dates from 2018, and I only want to return those months that are October. So we're going to run that, and we'll scroll that to the top. And notice that our data set, I'm kind of doing a refresher reminder, our data set has a price ID, that's a unique identifier, and then we have a ticker symbol. That's what you can look up on the Google Finance or Yahoo Finance to look up that company. The industry, the trade date, the opening price, the high, the low, the closing price, and volume, meaning number of shares traded. So that's the data set that we're using. We'll use quite a bit, and sometimes I just want to refresh what we're doing. So let's go to our first query. And the question we have is list the price ID and the stock high prices that are over $130, and we want that rounded to the nearest penny. So the nearest penny portion makes me think that we're going to have to use a function. We are going to probably use a rounding function. So let's look at that query and then we'll run it and then I'll explain it. So we are looking at price ID, that's in the select clause, and then we're looking at the ST high. The question asked us to, to round to the nearest penny. So the round function takes two arguments. It's the column here, and this is where we want to round it to. So price ID, and we're going to round the high price to the nearest penny. This as gives me the alias or the new column name, and I gave it a nice long name uh, to be descriptive. And then, of course, it's from the stock data table, the question also asked that we return only those high prices that are over $130. So let me run this query, and we'll go look at the top because it'll have those um, column titles. Now we see the price ID, and we see that we, we're rounded to the nearest penny um, so we have 60 cents or 87 cents. Just to have fun here, let's round it to the nearest dime. So let's say that we'll change this to a one. Let's see that our data is going to change. So we execute this. Notice in our data that now we don't have any pennies. So a two rounds it to the nearest penny, a one rounds it to the nearest dime. If we put a zero here and run it, you'll see that we have to the nearest dollar. Similarly, if we did negative one, it would round to the nearest ten dollars. So the point in this query was to show how we use a round function and have a little bit of a condition in the WHERE clause. Let's go to our next query here. And that is list each ticker symbol and the average daily trade volume for that stock. Order the list from highest to least daily trade volume. Wow, there's a few things going on in this query. 
And when you have queries that start to get a little more complex, there are a lot of components. So the, the better way to do it is to start to break the query down into little pieces and say, okay, what do I put in each clause? Well, I know in the select clause, I'm going to put ticker symbol and I'm going to have an average volume. Now, I also know that if I have a non-aggregate, which is going to be ticker symbol, and an aggregate, which is average daily volume, that it's implied that we have to have a group by. If you ever have a non-aggregate and an aggregate, you have to have a group by. Lastly, it says to order the list from the highest volume to the least volume. So that order by is going to want a order by descending because it's going to be most to least. Let's look at our answer and run it. Here. Now, let's see. We have the select the ticker symbol and we use the aggregate average on the volume. We give it an alias name of average volume. Again, it's from the uh, stock data table. And here you see that we group by the non-aggregate. Now the tricky part when you set up these problems, or historically when I teach students, is to know which one to group on and which one to do the aggregate on. Well, we want the average volume per each ticker symbol. Lastly, we did an order by this average volume, um, and we did it descending. So we'll run that, and in our answer, you'll see average volume for Apple and for each one of the ticker symbols below it. Okay, Now, we, we had that descending. Interestingly, in the order by, I had order by average volume descending. The other way I could have done this is I could have put the alias in the order by. So I'll just copy this, put it here, and this would do exactly the same thing as we did previously on the query. That is, we're going to give an order by average volume descending. So the point being that we uh, can do the order by, and it can either be with an aggregate or with the alias. Okay. Now the next one here is, is a three-query sequence, and it's going to be designed to show something called a Cartesian product or a cross-join. And we have a lot of fun with that.